Hello, good morning. How's it going, villagers? Oh my gosh, it's Friday. I just realized it's Friday. Happy Friday, you guys. We made it to the freaking weekend. Oh my goodness. As you can tell, this kind of snuck up on me. Happy Friday. I feel like it deserves a little bit more of a celebration that we made it to the weekend because this week was, uh, it was hella long for me, guys. It was so long for me. All right. It's Friday. We made it to the Friday. We made it to the weekend. Um, let's celebrate, actually. So I wanted to share with you my secret remedy to mastitis. Um, and I call it my secret remedy because I've never seen this not work. Um, I also did not make this up. This is not one of the he-he-isms. This is not one of the things that I made up. These are all things that I learned... Um, just by doing. These are all things that I learned um, from taking lactation courses, from working under really great lactation specialists, from um, reading the lactation books that I read, from supporting the parents in, um, you know, their lactation journey. And so I wanted to share with you I guess it's not so secret. I shouldn't call it a secret mastitis trick rather than like a foolproof mastitis trick. Um, I have helped numerous, like so many, I don't even have a count of how many women. I've helped um, get rid of mastitis or a clogged duct. Uh, that way they don't need antibiotics. So before I show you the remedy, I want to dive in a little bit into the education piece and um, what it is. How do you get it? When do you need antibiotics? Because sometimes you absolutely will. Um, mastitis. Mastitis is an infection in your breast that happens when your breasts are too engorged and your body's not able to regulate that and then an infection happens. So you can get mastitis or a clogged duct. A clogged duct is um, where one of your milk ducts. So you, I'm sure we've all seen the picture of our breasts and it has the little piece down here and all these like tree roots Oh, are these like streams, these rivers are coming down to your nipple. Those are your milk ducts. Um, milk flows from your ducts out of your nipple and uh, that's how your baby drinks. That's how your, your milk is actually expressed. So um, a clogged duct is when one of those tree roots or the rivers in your breast get clogged and it gives you a clogged duct. Now mastitis and clogged duct can happen for several reasons. So maybe you're not draining your breast every single time that you feed or you pump. You're going to want to do this. You're going to want to drain your brain, your brain, and <laughs> drain your brain, <laughs> drain your breast every time you, um, you pump or you feed your baby, which means if your baby feeds and they don't drain your, bre your breast all the way, you can pump, you can use a little hand pump like this. You don't have to hook up your electric pump. I know that's not fun. I know that a lot of people really just don't love it. Um, don't hook that up, you don't have to. You can use a hand pump. It gives you much more control. It's much faster, um, it's easier, it's more convenient. There's no electricity. It's just, I'm a hand pump girl. I just love a hand pump. Um, so mastitis, clock duck, what else can cause them? Not draining your breast all the way. Wearing too tight of bras. That'll do it. Um, not feeding or pumping frequently enough. So a lot of times we see this happen as your baby starts to drop feeds. You may think, oh yeah, I'm just going to go from waking every two and a half to three hours at night to, well, if my baby sleeps eight hours, then I'm just going to sleep eight hours. Mm -mm -mm. That is a bad recipe for a clogged duct or mastitis. Unfortunately, you are going to have to probably wake up during the night and pump, even just quickly. Um, and you don't have to you don't have to drain your breast all the way at that point because we're not um, we're not necessarily telling your breast that your baby is feeding all the way. We don't want your your breast to think that your baby is waking up to get a full feed. But you are going to want to drain them a little bit so that you don't wake up engorged or with a clogged up or with mastitis. Okay. Um, what else? Your diet could have a bit to do with this. And if you find that you're having recurrent clogged ducts or mastitis, you can implement um, sunflower lecithin into your diet. It is a simple supplement. As always, check with your doctor before you, um, before you put this into your regimen. But 
it's definitely a thing. It's definitely an option. It's definitely helped hundreds of our clients. Um, so Sunflower Lechidin, you can get it off Amazon. You can get it at Whole Foods. You can get it at Target. You can get it probably at CVS. I've never bought it at CVS or a drugstore like that, but I'm sure they have it. Again, it's just a simple little supplement. Um, I would go all, all organic if you could, if you have that access. If not, um, I trust you to make the decision for your own body. I mean, you're a you're an adult. All right. Let's get this party started and how we can remedy this. Mm. I didn't talk to you about signs and symptoms. Okay, so how do you know you have a clogged duct or uh, mastitis pain? Usually it's not going to be comfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable. Um, a fever might be associated with it, a low-grade fever. Now, you are probably going to have engorgement and a red spot on one of your breasts and your breasts might feel tender and they might feel a little bit warm um, and you might even know notice from a clogged duct that a, a breast that is normally very well producing isn't producing anything that is a really good sign that you have a clogged duct here is the kicker if you catch it before you have a fever you can usually stave it off and don't necessarily need antibiotics. If you already have a fever, you need to call your doctor. If you have a fever, then it's possible that you need antibiotics and your doctor is going to be the only person that can tell you yes or no whether you need antibiotics or not. And listen to me. I know antibiotics are like the antichrist in this, in this country. I know that you don't want to take antibiotics. I know that you don't want to put antibiotics into your baby and then breastfeed or put them into your body and then breastfeed and have them go into your body. But listen to me. If you don't take care of your mastitis, and you're clogged up, you're going to end up in the hospital. You need antibiotics if you need them, okay? Please, 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 please don't not take antibiotics because you think antibiotics have a bad rep. Get your mastitis, get your clogged duct taken care of so that you can have a beautiful, long-lasting breastfeeding and nursing and pumping relationship. Because um, if you don't nip it in the bud now and you let it kind of go because you don't want to take antibiotics, the aftermath could just be a lot more harmful, okay? So get the antibiotics if you need them finish them out and then put that chapter behind you and hopefully uh, with this remedy and with a sunflower let it in and knowing what causes it and knowing the early signs and symptoms you won't ever have to have the antibiotics again now um, to think that it is like a one-off event it totally could be some people never have mastitis some people never have clogged ducts some people just have it once in their pregnant uh, in their postpartum in their nursing and breastfeeding and pumping relationship and then some people have what I call chronic clogged ducts and this means that like every few weeks you can just assume that a clogged duct is headed your way for this, I would definitely recommend talking to your doctor about sunflower lechidin. I cannot tell you how much of a difference this makes. And secondly, I cannot recommend your diet enough. Make sure you're looking at your diet. Make sure you're drinking enough water. You don't understand how important water is when it comes to breastfeeding or nursing or pumping. It is like, it's the gold in the liquid gold, right? Like you have to have water in your body. You have to be hydrated if you're going to make enough milk and if you are going to have a healthy breastfeeding, nursing, pumping relationship with your own body, water is required. All right, now I think I got to all the goodness stuff that you like needed all the juicy goods beforehand. So let's slide over our magic bowl of goodies. All right, what will you need for this? First thing, hand pumps. So I prefer this one because it gives you a lot more control. Some people just have the haka. I love the haka. I just don't think it's strong enough for to pull out a clogged duck, but I will show you both. Um, I just wanna say twice, I don't think this is strong enough. It, it, these are like 20 or $25. It's worth the investment, okay? Um, I'm a hand pump girl, what can I say? A vibrator, a good old fashioned vibrator. Getting freaky in the bedroom, it helps you get your, your clogged ducts out, right? So get a vibrator, grab that. You're going to want um, your boob. So I have this boob, so I'm not gonna pull out my own boob and I'll use that. You're also going to want a, um, a container that's somewhat deep. Your breast is gonna need to fit in here, okay? So you're not gonna wanna be doing like an espresso cup. 
that ain't gonna work. May work for me, but your average breastfeeding person probably not gonna work in an espresso cup. So get a uh, get a bowl that your breasts can fit in. You're gonna want to dip your breasts into this, okay? Um, and then next, you're gonna want some Epsom salt, and this is just like came from Whole Foods, just organic Epsom salt, nothing special. Mine smells like lavender, but you definitely don't have to have that. Um, all right, I think this is all of our stuff. So let's get started. You're gonna fill this up. You're going to fill this up um, with hot water. Then you're going to stick it in. Well, if you have a kettle like this, you can do the kettle with hot water. Or you can stick it in the microwave. Um, you are going to want this to be as hot as you can stand it on your breast. Um, we want it to be want it to be warm, okay? Not a little bit warmer than body temperature. Like, we want it to be a hot, hot bath. So as soon as you can put your boob in there, don't make it painful. Don't hurt yourself. For goodness sakes, don't burn yourself. Like use your brain. Um, but you want it to be you want it to be hot water. Okay. Then you're gonna do a big old scoop of Epsom salt. I don't want to waste Epsom salt because I use it so much in my home. Um, so I'm actually not gonna put it in here. But when I say a big scoop, I mean like a big scoop. You would rather overdo the Epsom salt than underdo the Epsom salt because this is a key factor. That salt is going to draw out that mastitis and um, the start of that infection, that fever. It's going to draw out the clogged duct. It's going to open things up. Your Epsom salt is a really big key factor in this, okay? So um, let me get a sip of coffee. All right. You have your vibrator. You have your Epsom salt. You have your pump. Now you're going to take your breast, your your raw breast, like you should be standing naked since I'm on a public platform and we'd be arrested for that kind of stuff um, or shadow band. I am gonna stay dressed, but take your breast and you're going to literally pick up your breast and you're gonna dip it in here and you're just gonna hang out, okay? I'm gonna use this and you are going to, you see how you want your breast in here. Like you want it in here. This little guy, his nipples on the bottom, that's fine. If you have a deeper tub, um, a deeper bowl, sink your whole breath in, breast in here. We want your whole breast to be underwater. We want it to be warmed up, and we want it to be getting that Epsom salt in there. All right, as you're doing this, you're going to take your vibrator, turn this little freaky deaky on, you're gonna want it to be pretty powerful. Um, so if you have an extra powerful, whoopsie, if you have an extra powerful one, then the lowest setting might work. But if you don't, ramp that sucker up and you're actually gonna stick this in the water and you're going to stick it onto your boob. You're gonna vibrate your boob right on that clogged duct. So wherever that red spot is, and if you don't think that you have a clogged duct and you think instead it's mastitis, you can, do it kind of all over your breast. But for a clogged duct, you're gonna to wanna to find that clogged duct. You're gonna to wanna to find the red piece in there and you're gonna to wanna to put this right on there. And you're putting some pretty good pressure on it, right? You are really trying to work that clogged duct out. So you're gonna to wanna to hold some pressure onto your boob and it's gonna feel really funky. Um, and this is a weird exercise. I totally, totally, totally get it. You're gonna do this for 10 minutes. Keep your breast sunk, keep it in the hot water, keep it in the Epsom salt water and vibrating it for 10 minutes. So after that, you're gonna bring your breast out and you are going to pump like a crazy person. So you're gonna put this on here and you, look at that. <laughs> you are going to pump, 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 pump. Now, if you have a true clogged duct, it's possible that nothing comes out because there's a clogged duct. That makes sense anatomy wise, right? Don't freak out. You're just gonna put your boob back in. If your water needs heating back up again, do it, heat it back up. You can pour it out, you can make more, you can just go stick it in the refrigerator, uh, refrigerator. you can go stick it in the microwave and warm it back up. There's no rhyme or reason to getting your, your water hot, okay? Do this for another 10 minutes Pump, 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 pump. Now, I say do this for about an hour. It looks like three, four, five dunks in the Epsom salt water. If your clogged duct doesn't release, I would vibrate before every single feeding. You're gonna wanna do this. You can do the hot water and the Epsom salt and the vibrating before every single feeding, which seems like a pain in the rump, 
But is it better than having antibiotics? Is it better going to the doctor? Is it better than having a painful clogged duck? Like, yeah, it is. So wake up, put the hot Epsom salt on, put your vibe on, and then feed your baby. Now, when you feed your baby with a clogged duck, you are going to do what's called the dangle feed. This is really fun because I love it. Um, I love the dangle feed because I think it's really fun and innovative. You're actually going, I don't have a baby right now, but you're actually going to, huh, let's use this squash. Um, you're going to lay your baby down flat like this, usually on a bed, probably not on a counter like this because it's very hard. You can do it on the couch. You can do it on your bed. And then you're going to actually lean over your baby like this. And you're going to feed your baby like this. It's called the dangle feed, right? You literally dangle your boob and you're going to see that your baby will, they'll move their head. So you don't need to be like chasing them with your boob like this. They'll move their head and you can simply dangle. And this is actually really good for their neck control too, because it allows them to lift their head to get to your breast, to get to your nipple. So mm, this is a great exercise all the way around. But what this does, what dangle feeding does, it, it allows gravity to work towards you. You also are going to want your baby's chin to be pointed towards the duck. Let me say that one more time. You're going to want your baby's chin to be pointed towards the duck. So let's say that you have a clogged duck up here, which means what? Your baby's chin needs to be pointing this way, which means their forehead is down here. How are you going to hold your baby up like this, right? Well, that's where the dangle feed comes in. So if you're trying to get your baby's chin to be up here, you lay your baby down and maybe you come up this way. If your clogged duck is down here, maybe you spin your baby around and that way, oh yeah, you spin your baby this way. So your baby's head is facing this way, right? So you're, you're a little opposite. That's also the power of the dangle feed is you get to manipulate where your child's mouth goes on your breast um, much more than a football hold or the cradle hold or lying back, any of that. Um, so the dangle feed is super, super, super useful. Um, and then that's about it. That's pretty much the whole protocol. It's not that hard. It is time consuming. You have to put the hot water. You have to do the Epsom salt. You have to let that dissolve. You've got to put your breast in the hot water and vibe it for 10 minutes and then do the power pumping. Um, now, a lot of people will have questions about using a electric pump for this. It's not my fave and I'll tell you why. You don't have any control. With this thing, you're in total control. This thing does not work if not for you. The electric one, it works without you, basically. You plug that thing in and you have a couple controls that you can choose from. But you don't get to control what those controls mean. You don't get to control the difference in, in those levels, right? Whereas this, you're in total control. You get to go fast if you want. You can go slow if you want. You can make it do a tighter suck. You can change the flange size. There's so much control that you have in a hand pump that you just don't have in an electric pump that is... It's a machine, essentially, and this is not. It's a manual pump. So, I recommend... I mean, this is on my top... 10 like breastfeeding if you're going to feed a child from your body you need a hand pump in my opinion um so hand pump it out you can use an electric pump absolutely just be very careful with the level that you're using we don't want to cross over from pulling out a clogged duct to over um like engaging your breast to trick your breast into thinking that you need to make more milk because that would be the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish here. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you have a better handle on dangle feeding. I hope that you found a new life um, skill for your freaky meeky bedroom vibes. And I am sprinkling some no mastitis, no clogged duct dust on you for today. All right, guys, I will see you later.